kitchen and today we're gonna be making a slow oven roasted leg of lamb. Uh, it's holiday season a couple days till Christmas so I can find lamb in the stores in Germany. Usually it's kind of difficult to find here. Uh, this is a little bit over one and a half kilo piece. If you have the whole leg that's fine too. Um, but yeah I love lamb. You know it's, um, some people find it too strong tasting so you can add more things like rosemary and lemon that will kind of mild that taste. I don't mind the strong taste. But lamb, cooking lamb can be kind of tricky. You either want to do it really delicate so it's nice and pink, but if you overdo it, it's dry. If you undercook it, it's too tough. Slow roasted is the way to go. So um, I already turned my oven on to 170 degrees Celsius. It's about 325 Fahrenheit. I'm going to be cooking it in this cast iron Dutch oven. So. I'm going to go ahead and throw that in now to preheat it. And if you don't have a cast iron Dutch oven, you can use any contain any kind of metal thing. You just want to be able to cover it, so you use foil if you need to, if not, a little bit for it. Uh, we're going to be making gravy with this as well. So ideally, if you have even if you have something like this to elevate it, so it's not sitting at the bottom of the pan, that'll work. But what I'm going to do, because this doesn't fit in my Dutch oven, is just make a bed of onion and lemon and garlic. All right, so all you're gonna really need is the onion, lemon, garlic, rosemary, salt and pepper, uh, some beef, beef broth, and I'm gonna add a bit of cumin. And I actually got a secret weapon. That's some dried mushrooms we picked earlier this fall, which I'll rehydrate, and I also use the broth for that. Uh, I haven't decided what I'll cook with it, either rice or uh, mashed potatoes. But let's get started on the meat. Now this is a bone-in piece. I'm going to take the side of the skin and cut diagonally about every three quarters of an inch or so. Score it like that. And then the other direction to make kind of this diamond pattern. That's going to help kind of with that fat, that skin melt get flavor, more flavor into the, more seasoning into the meat. All right. So now what I'm going to do next is just prepare the, just cut the onions big pieces because I want them to kind of elevate the meat. And before I forget, I'm going to start rehydrating these mushrooms. I usually like to do this overnight, at least three hours. But if not, when they're big pieces like this, I crumble them up in smaller pieces. And I really want to just get the broth, the stock from the mushrooms. So I'm going to use these either in the gravy or the and the rice or whatever I end up baking with. Say, these smell so good. These are uh, Steingotts. They're porcini mushrooms. these things we had a good year so I'm gonna go a little bit overboard and use a lot because it doesn't take much for these for the flavor I mean if you look you can find dried porcini mushrooms or bouillon from it it's a bit pricey but it's really good or just learn to pick them because once they're dried like this they'll stay good for a long time a couple years at least I'm gonna go ahead and fill that up with warm water to let it soak. All right, for the garlic, just peel it. And just peel garlic quick. I tried a lot of different methods, soaking it in water, that works. But the best way i found lately is just to smash it with the skin. And the skin comes off a hundred times easier after that. So what I like to do is take a piece of that garlic and give it a good, effort. I'm going to actually smash it a little bit more to get the oils coming out. And give that a good rub all over the meat. In these grooves here, I'm going to stick a few little pieces. All right, what I'm going to do is cook it the skin side down first because it's going to slow roast. Eventually, I'm going to take the lid off and then actually roast it at a higher temperature, skin side up to give it that nice color. 
So I'll go ahead and season this side first because it's going to go face down in the pan. And that's going to be just some salt and pepper. And a little bit of cumin as well. You don't have to add it, but I like it on lamb. Some people like mint. I do not like mint. I'm not a fan of mint. It goes good on lamb, I guess, but no thank you. And some black pepper. For the lemon, I'm gonna cut it into big slices. Again, I'm gonna use all this stuff to make like a bed to elevate it off the bottom of the pan. All right, so I got my Dutch oven preheated. We're gonna throw in a nice bed of this onion. and lemon. What I do is put the garlic on top of the layers of onion and lemon so it's in contact with the meat. There's my nice bed to rest on. Next, last thing is the rosemary, which I wish I had more, but it's all that's left growing in the garden now this time of year. And like I said, I'm gonna throw this skin side down and now coat the top with the salt, pepper, and cumin. Next, I'm gonna throw about a cup of beef broth. And then you can add another cup of water, but instead what I'm gonna do is use some of this mushroom water, which it doesn't take long. The mushrooms are in there for just five, 10 minutes and it's already got an amazing aroma. So about a cup of that. Because you want to have some liquid in there to keep the meat moist because it's going to be cooking for a long time. And of course I forgot one thing, olive oil. So that's the last step. You're just going to drizzle a bit of olive oil over the top That is it. We're gonna cover this up with the lid and put it in the oven for about four and a half hours um, at 170 Celsius, 325 Fahrenheit. So we'll come back and take a look at it. All right, this has been in the oven for four and a half hours. Uh, last hour I turned the temperature down to 145 Celsius because I, I think that was a little too high. I don't wanna get it dry. So I got this out. I'm gonna actually turn the oven up for roasting now. So you want to put it above 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to go about 210 Celsius. Take a look at this. Oh yeah. It looks and smells very good. It's adjusted 40 minutes. I'm going to keep an eye on it though. I just want to get that nice brown sear or roasted color on it. Let's go ahead and give it a flip. And I have to say, it does not look dry to me. Looks awesome. Smells really good. So now we're going to leave the lid off and put it back in the oven for about... I'm going to check after 25, 30 minutes. It says 40 minutes, but I just want... Once it gets a good color, good brown roast on the top, I think it's ready. Meanwhile, I've got some mashed potatoes in the smoker on cold smoke. It's a new thing I'm trying out. Um, I'll have that video up as well. So I'll either put it in the description or info card or just subscribe and you'll see it. So back in the oven we go. Oh, that smells so good. The whole house has been smelling good for the last four and a half hours and I am hungry. So the lamb is roasted and the potatoes are smoked. Of course they're cold now because they've been cold smoked out in the cold. So these are going to go in the oven just to heat them up. And meanwhile I'm going to wrap this in foil, let it rest for about 10 minutes and start making the gravy.
All right, so our next step is put this Dutch oven over a burner. We're gonna take this meat and put it to rest in foil. Falling off the bone, good. We're gonna wrap that up and let it rest for 10 minutes. already pretty thick so I'm gonna add a bit you could add water or I'm gonna add this mushroom water now we're just gonna strain out the gravy into a serving container and eat so we're ready to cut into the lamb you can just tell by how loose the bone is it is very tender Does not look dry to me. Cold smoked potatoes, a little bit of lingonberry, and some lamb gravy. Okay, so time to give it a try. Start with the lamb. Mm. Excellent. The lemon really added something to it. Now these cold smoked potatoes. 